So a few years back, I was playing Texas Hold'em, and I noticed as the number of players shrink, the hands get quicker and quicker. Quite often, a single person would be the designated card shuffler, shuffling over and over again. Shuffling. I said shuffling. Shuffling. Thank you. And then it hit me. There must be a better way. And of course, there already is a better way. There's actually a few different options. On the consumer end, you have these things, which I guess work, but they require a lot of effort. You have to split up the cards over and over. The plastic gears chew up the playing cards, and they're really loud, and they don't actually really shuffle that well. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have these, which are used by casinos, very expensive, and actually you can't just go out and buy them because I guess they don't want people hacking them or something. And then finally, there actually is a very limited number of middle ground products, so kind of premium shufflers. The problem with these is that they cost upwards of a thousand dollars and, well, quite frankly, I don't want to spend that much money on a card shuffler. So like any engineer, I decided to build my own. My design uses mostly 3D printed components with some off-the-shelf stepper motors, linear guides, and other hardware. In total, I probably spent about $100 in parts, though admittedly I got these linear rails for free, so if you were to build this whole thing on your own, it'd probably cost around $200. Overall, this device is actually pretty reliable. Yes, it sounds like a jet engine, but I blame that on 3D printed gear profiles. So at this point, I had a working shuffler, and then I remembered the movie Ocean's 13. If you've ever seen it, you know the scene where they rig all of the slot machines and table games so that the patrons of the casino always win and they bankrupt the casino. You win! Yeah, well, I wanted to do something similar with my shuffler, except instead of stealing from casinos, I could steal from my friends. So I threw in a Raspberry Pi, a camera, lighting, and a whole bunch of code, and now this shuffler has the ability to do some alternate shuffling modes. So using the web UI, I can decide exactly how I want hands for two different table games to play out. But before we get into all that, let's just go over how this machine works. I actually started on this project nearly two years ago. The first iteration was essentially an automated version of those cheapo shufflers. But instead of requiring the user to split up the cards into each of those two side bins, it would do it automatically with a center bin that could rise up and down, and then a sweeper arm that would push them back and forth. It basically would have worked like this. Okay, so not exactly, but it doesn't matter because I didn't go with that design anyway. What I did instead was create a machine that has way more control of where it's putting each card. Basically, instead of relying on spitting the two decks towards each other to create that randomness, it is deliberately placing one card at a time into one of eight bins and then recombining those to create a shuffled deck. The most difficult part of this new design was the mechanics and most specifically the card dispenser. It's surprisingly tough to dispense one card at a time from a deck. On top of that, 3D printed FDM parts aren't exactly known for their accuracy, so creating a reliable system took quite a lot of trial and error. The final design uses a total of three rollers, each lined with a bunch of extra soft o-rings which are used to grip the cards. One of these rollers is sitting underneath the deck as it's in the device, and this is what's used to feed one card at a time. The other pair of rollers is spinning all the time, and this is what actually grabs the card and then spits it out of the front of the dispenser with a little bit of speed. This dispenser also uses some current sensing to determine when we actually have dispensed the card, and that allows us to not accidentally feed more than one card at a time through this device. These rollers are housed in what I call the dispenser, and this has the ability to move up and down, but only does so so you can add and retrieve your deck at the start and end of the cycle. Now once the dispenser drops into the device, all the action is pretty much happening on the bin side. This is the block that contains 8 slots in it, and it's what's actually going to be bouncing up and down whenever a new bin is selected. So once we dispense enough cards into those 8 bins, they need to be returned back into the original dispensing bin. So this is done using a push bar, which is basically a giant fork that just sweeps horizontally from right to left and uses those slots cut into the bins to push the cards back from the bins to the dispenser. One bin at a time, they are returned from the bottom up to ensure the push bar doesn't do this. So once the entire shuffling cycle is complete, the deck will rise back up out of the top of the machine so you can retrieve it. The shuffler uses 
two different controllers, a Raspberry Pi and an Adafruit Feather. Additionally, it uses a web page as the main method of user interfacing, so it's a fairly complex system for a DIY project. So therefore, I will go through the entire code base line by line and explain it in detail. This is the main Python script, and basically this is what does Yeah, so let's use post-its instead. If you care about the code for some reason, my GitHub info is below. So this is the web app. It's hosted from the Raspberry Pi, and it's used as a graphical user interface for controlling the shuffler. Now on basic shuffle cycles, it's as simple as entering some numbers. On the more complex, some might say cheaty ones, you can select the actual cards and suits and the order and all that stuff. Now this web page saves all the data you enter as a text file. I know, kind of janky, but I'm not good at this stuff. Then there's a Python script running in the background, which is retrieving and parsing the data from that text file. If we're doing a normal cycle, that data is simply a few numbers. If we're using the cheat mode, it's going to be a whole long list of playing cards and which hands they're expected to be. Now this Python script then communicates with an Adafruit feather, sending commands over serial. The feather handles those commands and sends things like stepper direction signals to one of the three stepper motor drivers, a gate signal to a MOSFET controlling the dispenser motor, or a PWM signal to a servo, which is what's used on that single dispensing roller. Feather also has an analog input line to read the dispenser motor current, and this is used for actually detecting when a card has been successfully dispensed. Now all these parts work together to ensure the deck gets shuffled as randomly as possible, unless that isn't what you were looking for. Q open CV. Say you wanted to read this card. If you're a human, it's easy. You've been trained to recognize and process these symbols in your brain, and you don't have to put in any thought to realize that this is an ace of spades. Computers don't have it so easy, but OpenCV helps them significantly. The shuffler uses a camera mounted below the dispenser bin, and it's looking through a very small window at the bottom of the dispenser, which exposes the corner of each playing card. The camera captures an image and converts it to grayscale, Using a calibration image, which was taken by just using a pure white playing card, we can apply an offset to the captured image. This corrects for any glare or bright spots and results in an even exposure across the image. We then apply a threshold to turn all pixels below a certain value black and above to pure white. This gets us a nice, crisp image that hopefully looks like a symbol and a ring. And finally, we let OpenCV do its thing and identify all continuous contours in the image. Basically, it just identifies and isolates each blob in the image so that we end up with basically just a cropped image, which hopefully is of the area we care about. So the last step is to run through all of these smaller cropped sections, compare them to a training set, and see which it matches closest to. Now finally, once we know what the card is, we can send it back to that main Python script and it can determine which bin it's supposed to go into based on all the inputs it received from that web UI. Well, congrats on making it this far, or if you just skipped this part. So the primary intended use of this device is to genuinely shuffle cards. And doing so is pretty easy. Well, at least now it is. Drop your deck into the machine, open up the web browser and go to the shuffler's web interface. Looking at the random shuffle section, you can tweak the parameters if desired, or just use the default ones and hit shuffle. The deck will then drop down and it will begin shuffling your cards. And after about two minutes, the shuffling will be complete and your deck rises back up. Watching this thing go is just really fascinating and it honestly never gets old. There's just a little something about overcomplicated mechanical devices. Cool, but that's not why you're here, is it? So, say you want to use this shuffler for evil. You start with the same process. You drop your unshuffled deck into the top, open up the web interface, and this time we're going to navigate to, let's do blackjack. Blackjack's pretty straightforward, you simply enter the total number of players at the table, and you hit the little tick mark for who you want to get a blackjack. 
anybody else will. Not this time. The camera located underneath the deck is going to identify each card before it gets dispensed and then the algorithms will determine exactly where it should go so that when this is all done shuffling, you get the hand you want. And just as expected, both players win with blackjack while the dealer gets junk. And finally, let's do a quick demo with Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em is quite a bit more complicated just because it's not relying on cards representing values, but rather full poker hands which contain five cards, three of which are shared by the table, two of which are your own. For this run, we want the dealer, me, to get a full house player one to get a flush, and player two to get a pair of pocket twos. So we're just going to run through and set that up real quick. So once again, this is using the camera below to recognize each playing card and determine the order that they should be dispensed. So now that shuffling is complete, we can deal it out, and the desired outcome is on the screen here just as a reminder. This project was a serious pain to finish, but quite a lot of fun and I've actually ended up learning a lot more than I expected to from such a strange and random project. I do have some future improvement plans. First and foremost, reducing that noise and just do a little bit more work on the dispenser to improve the reliability. But for now, I'm pretty happy with where this has turned out. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, you know the drill. And I'll see you in a few more years.